Welcome back to the channel. Today you can follow along as I install whoop, this Eaton M90 supercharger on this J-Series engine in this 98 Honda Civic hatchback. Uh, what I've done here is I took an intake gasket and traced it onto this steel plate, well, the other way, like this with a sharpie and what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut cut this out in a square because the intake is probably going to be uh, more like a box than than shaped like this uh, so I'm going to attempt to cut along this piece of uh, flat stock as a guide to try to make a straight line and then I'll cut it off this way and hopefully this will go quicker than the angle grinder. This is the first cut with the plasma tire so Load this next year. Put in the ballpark here. Alright, well I was able to hack that thing off with the plasma cutter. It's not the best edge I've ever made, but it was quick. So what I'm doing now is trying to see if this is going to work. Uh, looks like it's kind of pushed off to one side because it's hitting this fuel rail here. So let's have to add a little clearance there. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to mark right there where it hits. And I'm going to take a little notch out of there, probably with the angle grinder because that's going to be easier. And then we're going to see what we've got. Okay, well that seems to have been enough to make room. Now the flange is sitting flat on the lower intake. Uh, I think the next thing I'm going to do is drill out a couple of these holes that I've got marked. What I'm probably going to do is set this spacer on top of there and use a transfer punch, which is just a basically a mandrel with a hardened point on it. And what you do is you drop it through when you get the right size one. And then you can whack that with a hammer and it center punches those holes. And that's a good way to transfer a pattern onto there. So we'll see how that works. Okay, well, hopefully you can see those holes are all center punched. So what I did is I just clamped that uh, intake spacer onto this piece and then used these transfer punches to center punch those. So now I need to drill those out. Okay, well, there are some 
pilot holes drilled, if you can see them. So focus, that's pretty good. Pretty good. Uh, you have to drill the pilot holes first because that small bit is easier to keep in that dimple from the transfer punch. So now I'm gonna try to drill those bigger with this thing. the flange with the holes drilled in it. Uh, some of those will line up, some of them will need to be made bigger. My transfer punch didn't fit in that hole very tightly, so it's not perfect. Uh, but it doesn't really need to be. The, the holes for the intake are what's more important, and even that's not that important in my opinion. <laughs> then again, I'm a hack, so don't listen to me. But I think it's turning out okay. I had to make some more clearance there. Uh, I think I could probably bolt this down now. Um, maybe I will do that. And then make the holes in the bottom last after I get everything all welded up or at least tacked together. Yeah, that's not a bad idea. Because uh, I can put this spacer on the back side and mark the center of the holes and cut it from the other side and I think that would work fine and then this way I'm not getting a bunch of junk in the engine uh, while I'm building this which is probably a good thing all right more to come I'm all right, sure. so I want to get a visual on how the pattern of the supercharger is going to fit over the pattern over the opening I'm going to make here for this lower intake. So what I've got is some cardstock here. I'm gonna set it on there. I'm basically just gonna take my grubby hands and trace the outline. So I'll do that a while and then I'll come back. And there you go, one uh, supercharger <laughs> pattern. Um, so I'm gonna cut those out and place them on top of the intake here and see how wide this has to get up the top. Because I'm at the point where I could start building the sides and back in front of this. Uh, yeah, let's do it. All right, well, now I took that arts and crafts diversion to make this template here. As you can see, it's a pretty good facsimile of what I've got going on here. Uh, so this is the opening of the supercharger where the uh, where the hot air blows out into the engine. And then this is a little throttle that's controlled by this vacuum uh, pot on the side. And this is the, uh, this is the bypass. So when you're like at idle um, and low load, this is open so the supercharger is just turning, not forcing any air into the engine. Uh, when you get on it, this closes, and then all the air has to go through the compressor. Anyways, what I wanted to see is how wide this opening for the supercharger is. Because if it was really wide, you know, like this, then maybe you'd have to have it this taller so that you'd have enough room to actually build the lower intake. But because this is arranged like this, 
you can see it's not a ton wider than uh, the actual lower flange. So I think this is going to be fairly simple to build. Uh, what I think it's going to, is going to happen is I'm going to build some sides that kind of come up and out like this. Obviously that will be the whole length uh, that are just wide enough to capture this. And then uh, there'll be another plate. So this will be like a box on the bottom. I don't have to figure that out. Um, and then it'll have another plate on the top that has the pattern for the supercharger to bolt on. And uh, there you go. So I'm gonna use the power steering pulley to make sure I have the pulley for the supercharger aligned. And I don't know, this might not be terrible. It'll take a while, but it doesn't everything that's worth doing. All right, so I told you I was going to make another plate uh, for with the supercharger pattern on it. And this is the start of that. So I've traced around it with a Sharpie. And then I made a box. You can see I've drawn a box around it to show roughly where the supercharger is gonna go. Clamped it down while I did that. I also center punched all these holes with my transfer punches. Now that I've done that, I've got this rough outline of of the supercharger and you can see I've got some little bank marks there uh, where the center of each hole is. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut this out with the plasma cutter, big and square like that. And then probably what I'm gonna do is set it on the engine and try to make sure it's uh, straight and square with the engine. I'll probably mark this what I think is the middle of the supercharger. Uh, maybe I'll get the gasket and that'll make it easier to, to mark that, right? Um, actually, if I get the gasket, I bet it would be easiest to take the gasket and set it on here and mark and cut the hole, the square hole on the bottom of the supercharger. And then I can center that over the, uh, over the lower flange that I'm building and then line it all up like that. Maybe that's the way to do it. So next step is to make some sparks with the plasma cutter again. Here's what the supercharger looks like sitting on there on the plate that I hacked out with the plasma cutter in roughly the correct location. You can see how it sits on there. It's pretty low. So I think that's how it's gonna be set up. So it's just sitting on those two pieces of two by four under there. Now I've got this upper plate sitting on here uh, with the rough outline of the supercharger on there. Uh, holes center punched, if you can see those. Um, so the next thing I need to do is figure out where and how to locate the openings for the supercharger. So there's what the bottom of the supercharger looks like. And I think I showed you earlier this piece of paper here. Let's zoom this out a little bit. That's better. This piece of paper here, uh, which I was using to compare the width of the flange to the opening in the supercharger. So the next thing you need to do is figure out how I'm going to locate this here. Uh, what I did is I set it. I set it on the supercharger, roughly where the opening is, like so. And then I took a ball peen hammer and these two holes here that uh, kind of overlap the paper, I just tapped around the edges of those. Tap, tap, tap. And then eventually the little, the little piece of, if you can see that, there you go. Nope, 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 there we go. Uh, a little piece of paper fell out. It's right where those holes are. So if I take this and flip it this way and line it up with these center punch holes, which you can see there. Hopefully you can see. 
right there. So now I have the location of the openings for the supercharger on the plate and located in the correct position. So uh, what I'm ready to do is mark that and then cut those holes out with the plasma cutter or however I decide to do it. Maybe plasma cutter here and hole saw over there if I have the right size. And then I'll have the holes that I need, which will go, I think, a long ways towards getting this plate. Once I get it in the right location, I want to get it welded to the bottom flange. And then I need to take the bolts out that are holding the bottom flange in. Well, you'll see. You'll see what I'm doing. Uh, what I can see is you can see the bottom flange peeking out down here. And you can see the top flange. So what I might be able to do is just make a piece that goes from here to here and tack it on the car. And then the same for the back. You didn't even see anything down here. You can't see much. You'll have to trust me that uh, there's a possibility, especially once I cut the hole for the supercharger, the big hole there, that I can tack the top plate to the bottom plate with like a steel strap between the two, and that'll locate uh, the top and bottom plates relative to each other. And then I can take it off the car and build the box on the bench or the floor, as the case may be. Uh, this is not a high dollar operation, right? So we'll keep moving on this. I'm going to mark the hole for the supercharger outlet and the bypass valve on the plate, like I've got shown here, and then we'll move on to the next step. I was able to cut the holes for the uh, supercharger outlet and the bypass valve. Uh, that went okay. I cut this side with my guide and the rest of it freehand. This didn't go too well, but these are all cut undersized, so I'll fix that all up later. Um, I just wanted to see kind of where the holes are meant to be, and I'll clean all these jagged edges up with the grinder before I weld it all together. Uh, but this is kind of how it's going to fit. You can see the edge of the flange is like right down here, so uh, the piece on the bottom is going to have to come up this direction. And then uh, the front runner is maybe over here. So the air's got to go down and over quite a ways, um, but that gap is big enough that air will be able to get over there just fine. Uh, what's the next step? I think I could probably drill some holes that I've center punched. And I could also lay the plate on the supercharger and mark how much bigger these the holes that I cut with the plasma need to be. Uh, and then once I have that done, I think I can probably uh, set it on here, line it up, get the, get everything lined up properly and then make those straps that I was telling you about that will make this into one piece and hold the correct spacing. As you can see, I've just got two by fours. You can't see that one, but there's a chunk of two by fours sitting over here too. Just sits there like that. That keeps the spacing correct. And uh, pretty scientific, huh? Well, I still haven't bought the gasket because I'm stubborn like that, I guess. So what I've done is took this 11 by 17 uh, old plan sheet here that I had. This is just plain old paper. What I did is I, I'll show you what I did. I laid it on top of the supercharger like so. And then I used the ball peen hammer again, and tapped around this, tapped around each hole made these hanging chads here and uh, basically transferred the, the uh, pattern onto this piece of paper. And what I'm doing is I, I started drilling pilot holes, but I figured before I get too far into that, I'll throw my template on there and see if I'm reasonably close with my center punches which I should be reasonably close. And this thing doesn't have to be perfect. I mean, it's just gotta be pretty good. Yeah, that looks pretty good. So 
As you can see, there's some pilot holes that are drilled. Oh, there we go. Roughly in the middle of that. One looks a little off. That's pretty good. That's pretty good. And then you can see where my plasma cutting didn't go that well. I got some more to take off. Um, and these holes in the paper are the exact same size as the uh, the holes in the supercharger, which doesn't it doesn't need to be that way. As you can see, the actual gasket will be a little bit bigger, so I can open these holes up a little bit, um, and it won't make any difference. So I'm going to drill the rest of these holes now that I am happy that the center punches are in the right place. Maybe I'll mark like this part here so I can grind it out a little bit with the die grinder. Uh, otherwise, we're doing pretty good, I think. Keep, keep on trucking. I made a little bit of progress here. Uh, what I did is use my 2x4 pieces, had them sitting in there on top of the engine. Uh, put the supercharger where I wanted it, and here's the bottom flange. Uh, and then I tacked these, a strap on this side, and then you probably can't see it, but maybe I can make it so you can. And then you can see there's a strap on the back side there too. And that uh, fixes the relation between these two flange plates. So this is the one that bolts to the lower intake, and this is the one that bolts to the supercharger. So once I've got those two square to each other and the supercharger in the correct location, uh, what I've started doing is I bolted the supercharger on the top. I bolted the, uh, this is basically a spacer that's the same pattern as the lower intake. Uh, and the reason I bolted these on is to try to prevent uh, these two flange, the quarter inch steel flanges for the intake and the supercharger from turning into pretzels when I weld them basically. Uh, so what I did is I got this one and a half inch uh, thick uh, eighth inch, one and a half inch wide, eighth inch thick uh, stock hardware store and it fits right in there perfectly. And what I'm doing is I'm just tacking it and I'm gonna get it all tacked together in a lot of places before I remove the supercharger and this this flange so that all both of my both of my flanges are not all warped when I when I weld it. Because I think if you just took it all took the supercharger and this spacer off and welded it all together, you'd have all sorts of waviness in, in these two plates. And I want to avoid that as much as possible. Uh, so what I've got going on here is I've got the first one tacked in, I've got the second one made. See that is going to kind of fit in there like so. And then I'll need to build a plate for the front. And I'll have to cut, I want to cut this shorter because this, this adapter for the supercharger is so heavy. Uh, so I'm going to take any, any weight out of it I can. You know, I'll cut it down like this when this is all done. Uh, basically cut it to fit. Uh, it's just a square plate right now, but this quarter inch steel is super heavy. Uh, and then I'm going to probably get another eighth inch plate piece to go here and then I'll just build another boxed in section just like on the back or on the front or on the back here and this will just be square who cares uh, the air is going to come in this hole when you're idling and go down down this direction to feed the engine when the supercharger is uh, actually creating boost this will be closed and all your air is going to be coming through from the top. So it doesn't really matter if this is super aerodynamic or, uh, you know, contoured and all that kind of nonsense. Uh, the air is going to find where it needs to go. I'm not too worried about it. Uh, and you can see how thick my opening is there. That'll be enough to feed these. One thing I did do is I waited. I'm going to wait to drill the holes through this bottom plate for the uh, intake runners in hopes that that plate will stay a little bit 
uh, a little bit stronger and not warp as much when I when I weld it because that is going to be a real problem I think if I'm not careful so I'm gonna keep working on this I'm feeling good about where I'm at and this is actually gonna be pretty easy to finish up it's gonna be a decent amount of welding and cutting and grinding but at the end I think it'll work pretty good all right well here's where we are with it all tacked together you can see that's not really anything more than just a box I'm going to continue tacking this and weld it up with the supercharger and the spacer bolted to it still. Uh, and we'll see how this all turns there out. There she is all welded up. Well, mostly welded up. We're going to have to clean those up and I think I'll probably put maybe tape across the bottom and see if it holds water to check for leaks and then I can identify what where I need to uh, do a little more welding on. I'm sure there's some holes in there, but it's not too hard to patch that up with the MIG welder. The next step is to make holes for in the adapter plate on the bottom here for the intake runners. So this is the like the flange pattern for the lower intake where it bolts to the engine. And in order to do that, I need to use my hole saw here to cut holes in this plate. But somehow I need to center, I need to center my hole saw over the correct location. So I, I want to use a transfer punch like this, uh, but I need to punch it in the middle of the hole, which is going to be really hard to do by hand. So what I did is I 3D printed this uh, little plug here that goes right in there. And then this transfer punch fits real tight in there. And then you can just whack that with a hammer and mark each of the holes. That'll mark, mark the center. And then the hole saw gets a mandrel like this in the middle. I'm not, I'm not gonna use the three inch obviously, but uh, once I get a pilot hole drawn, drilled in the middle of each of these, I can use my hole saw to open that up and then uh, cut the holes in the, in the flange. So uh, that'll be my next step. I'll show you what that looks like. Holes. I went around and trimmed the edges of this plate with the plasma cutter to make it more aesthetically pleasing. Um, and the, the next thing I'm working on is trying to get this flange flat because despite my best efforts in holding it while I was tacking it uh, and welding it, it did warp. Uh, the top plate I think is good enough because it's gonna have a fairly thick gasket on it. And I may put some gasket sealant on there as well, but the bottom, I would like to use the multi-layer steel gasket from the original uh, intake and that's going to require a fairly flat surface. So when I put the intake spacer on it, it would kind of rock back and forth. So as you can see, I've got a high spot here, high spot here, and then kind of a high spot all the way through here. So this has got quite a, quite a wave in it. <clears throat> now the way I'm dealing with that is I have this old piece of backsplash. It's like a acrylic of some sort, I think. Um, but it's like a shiny, real thick, heavy plastic. Uh, almost feels like marble, but it's not. Um, and you can hold that up to your face and you can see your reflection in it like a mirror. So it's pretty flat and straight. You can tell it's not really distorted. So what I did is I just uh, spray adhesive some 220 grit sandpaper on there. And I'm just... I've been at this for about an hour now. I'm just running it back and forth on there like that. And that's sanding down the high spots, which you can see here. And leveling the whole thing. So uh, I think I probably have about another hour left. I just wanted to get it so, you know, the shiny part that's taking the, where I've taken the mill scale off of this plate it really just needs to have touched every surface of this and then it will be flat enough that I think it will seal fine. So I'm gonna keep doing this for a long time. Well, there it is in all of its glory. The supercharger adapter for the Civic. So what I did is I trimmed this plate with the plasma cutter to make it a little more, a little nicer looking. Uh, this hole has 
the nut welded on the back side of it because the supercharger gets bolted down on the top. Um, the rest of them, I'm going to have to be really careful when I put the bolts in because they're going to live inside of here. And then the supercharger goes over the top, right? And the bottom is pretty well sanded to make it flat again. And then I put a, let's really make it so you can see this. There we go. I put a 3 8 uh, right there, a 3 8 pipe uh, fitting I welded on there uh, for the intake air temp sensor. It's a GM one, so it's just a 3 8 NPT. And then the bottom one there is a port for the MAP sensor because the MAP sensor on the J series is mounted on the throttle body and the throttle body is not going to see any pressure. So in order to get a accurate pressure of what the what the motor is actually seeing, it's got to be underneath the supercharger, basically. <clears throat> so there you go. Now I'm just going to let this paint dry, and then I'm going to bolt it on there, and we're going to see how everything fits. Well, it's bolted on there. Check that out. So, the next step is going to be to come up with some sort of a tensioner and belt setup to connect the blower to the crankshaft. And I need to also uh, build an adapter to connect the J-Series throttle body, which I'm planning to reuse, uh, to this uh, flange here. Um, I need to figure out the map sensor. Uh, I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to reuse the J-Series one, possibly. Um, I am probably going to try to do that. And then, I don't know, that's about all I need to do to get the thing to run. I need to fill the blower back up with oil. I did take it apart and clean it out. It looked like the oil that was in there had been in there for a while. Um... It's gonna, the first start's gonna be with the original fuel injectors in it. I don't have the decapped ones in there yet. Um, it's gonna have the same tune in it that I had before. I just wanna see that everything turns, the belt stays on, all that kind of stuff. So, next part of this is gonna be trying to come up with a tensioner system that bolts onto the J-Series block and, uh, find the belt length and all that kind of fun stuff because this this is uh lined up with the with the crankshaft pulley and it's on the right plane uh this way so i think that this will work out pretty good actually see look at this yeah not bad not bad here is a random assortment of old tensioners and idlers that I've got in my stock here because I don't throw things away apparently. Um, I think I just need one tensioner slash idler to make this belt system work. So I'm going to uh, just kind of close my eyes and pick one. Uh, let's see. Yeah, this one looks good. I believe this is an idler pulley from a 07 uh, Toyota Sienna V6. So let's see how that works. I put a little bit of thought into the tensioner here. And to help me do that, put this pink string around the crankshaft pulley down there, alternator pulley there, supercharger pulley up here. And I'm really just trying to picture how this is going to lay out and I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a tensioner here and that'll give me a really good wrap on that pulley um, so it'll look something like this and then this tensioner would move back and forth it'd be bolted through that slot and it would move back and forth 
and I probably will come up with some kind of a mechanical tensioner that I can, uh, it's got like a bolt or a screw on it or something of some sort that'll allow me to mechanically tension that belt. Now, I think that'll work okay. I'm not super crazy about having it on the drive side, so the belt pulls this way. I'm not sure it's the best to have it on the drive side, but it probably won't make a huge difference since it's not gonna be a spring-loaded tensioner. Because I, I think it could possibly unload a spring-loaded tensioner and slip, but if it's a mechanical, you know, solid bolted on tensioner, it should be okay. Um, and I can't really explain my theory for why, why that's not a good idea or is a good idea. Uh, one thing that I did notice here that I'll probably have to deal with, uh, maybe a, a problem for future me, is if you look down here where this string slash belt will go, it runs sort of close to the, uh, to the engine mount casting. Now, I don't think that's an issue with this stock pulley on here, which is, I think, a 3.8 inch diameter, but these go down to like 2.7, I think you can get, even 2.5 if you machine the snout on the pull, on the supercharger. And that's how you make more power. So I'm thinking this thing's gonna be like, maybe make five PSI with the stock pulley on it. So an upgrade path is to replace the pulley in the future. So when I do that, it's gonna move the belt closer because the radius of this is gonna be smaller, right? And then it might interfere with this motor mount here. So what I may do is design it so that first iteration just has this single tensioner like this. And then the second iteration has uh, a ribbed tensioner so instead of a smooth one like this it's a ribbed one that just goes maybe like right there to hold it out a little bit and then the belt will go more Let's see if i can show you this the belt will go a little more like this and then no matter the size of that top pulley, it'll still clear the it'll still clear the uh, engine mount. So I think that's probably going to be the plan here. So it'll be kind of like that. Can you see it on there? Uh, yeah, there we go. And then you'll still have good wrap on the supercharger pulley, and I think that should work okay. And then I'll have good wrap on the alternator pulley. And I think I'll have, I don't know, it'll be more than 90 degrees on the crankshaft pulley. So it should be good enough, I think. The thing about this is you can always change the belt and add idlers if it doesn't work later on. Uh, I'm trying to do it once. So this is the idea that I have. Um, you saw this piece of cardboard here. Ew, what happened there? Um, I got a piece of cardboard with some poop on it apparently. Uh, the idea is this will bolt on here somehow. You can see I've got a whole selection of bolt holes there. And this will be like quarter inch steel probably, one quarter inch. Um, and that should be strong enough that I can do what I need to do here. And uh, we'll see how this all turns out. Well, as I was showing you, I took this piece of cardboard here and kind of marked off how I wanted this plate to look. Uh, and then I traced it onto this piece of quarter inch steel. And look at that. Look at that hand cut, that hand plasma cut. That's pretty nice. I just drilled a hole in each end and then I connected the dots with the plasma. That, that is pretty nice. I gotta say that looks pretty good. A little bit of cleanup and that slot will be ready to go. So the reason I have a slot in there, bear with me for a moment here. The 
So this, it's not big enough, maybe it is. So this pulley can ride on here and it'll slide in this slot to tension the belt. At least that's the idea. Uh, I think it could work. Um, it's gonna have to be spaced up off of here a little bit, maybe with a couple washers or something. And then the reason that, you can see here I had my slot there drawn straight, drawn straight, but I actually cut it at an angle. And that's in hopes that I can put some sort of a screw on the back of this to pull it into the belt to tension it. And, and then I'll tighten the nut down, the nut and bolt down after I get it tensioned into place with that screw. So bear with me, that's uh, an idea that I have that I can't really give you much of a description with my arm here, just waving it. Um, but I'll do some of this and then I'll come back and show you this bolted onto the car. Here's the progress for today. As promised, I would have something to show you here. Uh, what I've got is one rib of a serpentine belt, just binder clipped on there. And you can see it runs down around the crankshaft, alternator, tensioner, supercharger. That's all I've got for accessories. Uh, I'm having a little bit of trouble getting this plate to uh, be lined up with the pulley here. <clears throat> uh, as you can see here, I've just got some sections of pipe here to space it out. And I need to tune those a little bit more. But as you can see here, I do have a tensioner. And I ordered a serpentine belt that's uh, six rib. I think it was 66 inches outside diameter, which is the same as what I've got mocked up here. So we'll see how that looks when it comes in. And I think we're doing pretty good. Like I said, I need to tune this plate a little bit more. And then when I'm done, I'll trim this with the plasma cutter to get rid of this jagged edge to make it look a little nicer. And I also need to get a button head bolt for the bottom one here the bottom bolt because it rubs on the on the belt the way it is right now uh, I'm also going to come up with some sort of a brace for the back of it because I feel like this is kind of just out in the air flopping and I think that could be better so I'm going to come up with some kind of a additional brace I don't know where it's going to go from and to to be determined I guess We'll see. The new belt came in and this thing looks like it's actually gonna work. One thing that kind of stinks is you have to take the motor mount off to get the belt on because around there, but that's not a big deal how often you're taking the belt off. And it's not very hard to do. So here's the belt part number that I'm using, 6PK1675. That is a 66 inch, six rib, V-belt uh, from something like a 2018 Lexus GS300, something like that. I have to check the application. It doesn't matter that much. Uh, the original belt that I was using to go from the crank to the alternator only was like a three, 340 millimeter belt, which is much shorter. Uh, so this one's 1,675. So you can kind of see here, I've got the belt on there. The only issue is the lower bolt hole is gonna have a clearance problem. So that's gonna have to be a counter sunk, -sunk bolt. Uh, I don't have it all bolted up, just the one bolt in the, in the plate here that I'm building. I need to come up with a way to build, bolt in the bottom still. And I need something to hold the top of it. So I'll have a bolt here, down here, and something needs to hold the top. I haven't decided if I'm gonna weld a tab onto this steel intake that I built and then just have a tab go across and bolt it on there. 
or if I'm going to do it a different way. That probably makes the most sense. Uh, yeah, maybe I'll do that. But it's starting to look like a thing now. Look at that. Okay. Right. I have my tensioner plate all built here, and I have my two uh, other pulley, my other pulley and my tensioner pulley on here. Now, as I mentioned, the reason for this pulley is to get the belt out and away from the uh, the motor mount because it was coming straight down here and it was kind of close, uh, which I think would have been okay with the stock pulley on it. But if when I put a smaller pulley on there, uh, it was gonna you know, it would come off over here and it would come down and it would hit on the way down. So that's just to space it out. I think I've got plenty of wrap on this pulley already, so I don't think it's gonna make much difference from that standpoint. Um, I did clean up the edges of this plate with the plasma cutter and the grinder. It just made it look a little nicer. And then I've got two aluminum spacers and a nut down here. And then it's bolted onto the power steering. So these are both power steering pump mount points uh, and then it's got another spacer here so uh, this is actually part of the cylinder head over here and this is a bracket that bolts to the other cylinder head so this thing doesn't move at all and most of the load is in line with the belt here so I'm not going to put a tab across unless I find some problem where I'm needing it um, I think those two bolts will be plenty and I've got plenty of tension and ability to put a lot more tension on this pulley if I need to, or this belt. So I think slippage shouldn't be too big of an issue. Uh, so I think there's one more thing that I need to do before I can uh, actually start this thing. So I'll show you that. Okay, so over here on the other side of the engine, uh, Okay, there's maybe a couple things left. I need to connect this vacuum hose to this uh, piece here, so I have to drill a hole and put a nipple on there to connect this. This is the bypass valve actuator. Uh, so when there's vacuum on this side of the uh, diaphragm here, it pulls, pulls this little arm up over here and bypasses the supercharger. Uh, so when the throttle blade is closed, there's vacuum in here, and it pulls that arm up. And then when you open the throttle all the way, you get no vacuum in here. It's at atmospheric like it would be now when it's disconnected and it closes this valve. It's just a butterfly valve in the bottom there. Uh, so I need to do that. Probably do something better for this brake booster line, but I guess it will work the way it is. Uh, I have the factory J-series throttle body that I converted to cable actuation and that's not gonna mate up. So what I did is I'm gonna turn it 90 degrees like this, and then I've got, let's see if I can show you these in order here. I've got a gasket that I made here. Yep. And then I've got a adapter plate that I made go there with these countersink bolts and there we go you can hold it up right there we go and then there's another gasket that goes on there and then the throttle body the j series throttle body will bolt on it like so so that'll all bolt together and i've got that made and uh, this J-Series throttle body is a, like a 65 millimeter. I think the opening in the supercharger is something like 73, so it's not optimal. But I'm just trying to get it running right now. Uh, that's something I can deal with later, putting a bigger throttle body on it if I decide to do that. Um, this piece, I'm not sure what exactly this is, but it seems to be broken. I mean, you'll be able to just bolt that in there. I'll probably build a little block off plate for this because I'm not going to use that. Um, and then I think I can reassemble all this stuff, check the oil and try to start it.
I think. So next I'll show you this thing all assembled, I think. And then we'll see if we can get this thing to make some noise. How about that? Here we are, the moment of truth. It's pretty cold out today, but I think I've got everything assembled well enough that I can try to start it. Uh, we'll see how that goes. Now that we've got it running, nothing can stop us now. Oh, maybe that will stop us.